Hello, this is Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. In this video, we're going to be talking about the importance of iteration. Iterations are not only important for coding, but also for engineering and for the design process for artists. So let's have a look at how iterations work in those three areas. Let's start with a definition for an iteration. An iteration, I like to think of this as one time through a process. So if we go through a process and we go from start to finish, we the word iteration sort of implies that we're going to go through it again. So if we go through that process two times, we'd call that two iterations. So we can iterate a process, which is the verb form, or we can use the, the word iteration to talk about going through it. So in coding, we often use this with loops. So if we have a repeat loop, and let's say we repeat four times, um, and we're doing something inside the loop like moving and turning, that part that's inside that loop, that move and that turn, is called an iteration. So if we run this code, it's going to make a square. And that square was made out of four parts. It, the moving and the turning each time was an iteration. So the first iteration was that first line, we moved and turned, and then we had a second iteration for another line, and a third iteration, and then a fourth iteration. So an iteration can be the same thing happening over and over again four times, but it doesn't have to be that either. So sometimes in coding, we, we change things when we iterate. Uh, we do this with our variables a lot of times. So we might start off with a shorter line and then a longer line and then longer still and then longer still to make more of a spiral shape. And that is also an iteration. Um, what we do in engineering is a lot like this as well, where we don't do the exact same process over and over again. Uh, when we use the design cycle or the engineering cycle, these cycles are very, very similar to each other, what an artist does or what an engineer does. What an artist does in preparing a, um, an, a large art project or what an engineer does in solving a problem, coming up with a solution to an engineering problem. So e in either of these cases, we're going to start off with figuring out what it is we want to say, what it is we want to solve. We call that define the problem. So if we are defining the problem, we, we have to decide what it is that we're going to do. And once we have that problem, we can go right in to a little bit of re with a little bit of research and we can come up with possible solutions. We call this a brainstorm because we don't just want one solution or one idea. It's always a good idea to have more ideas to pick from than just one. Any problem that's worth solving is worth going through a couple of iterations and coming up with the best results. Once you have a bunch of solutions, you're going to pick one. And when you have one that you're going to choose that you think it might work, we're going to what we call develop a prototype. So developing a prototype is just picking the best idea that you think is going to help solve the problem, and you're going to start making that version of that thing. And the word prototype there tells you that this is just a, a trial, and you're probably going to do more than one iteration. So as we continue on with our prototype, once we have a prototype, then we can test it. So we can see how it performs, how does it work solving the problem. That test is going to generate data that we can then analyze. When we analyze that data, what's going to happen is it's going to help us redefine the problem. So we might end up with something where we don't have the exact same problem, but a refined version of the problem. So that whole process, that design cycle, that is what I would consider one iteration of the engineering or the design cycle process. So the idea here is you're going to go through this multiple times um, and you can end up redefining the problem, brainstorming new solutions to these new problems, developing prototypes, testing, analyzing over and over again to get better and better results. So we actually do this in coding too. I usually define the problem for you. Defining the problem in this case for coding is maybe assigning a particular type of game. You brainstorm possible games that you could use for that in terms of uh, who the characters are and what they're going to do. You start developing a prototype. That's your first draft of the game. You test it out and see what parts work. 
and then maybe you analyze that data by sending it to me and I give you some feedback. You look at your results, you redefine the problem, you've got a game but maybe the game's too easy and now you need to add a more of a challenge. So now that's your problem and now you can brainstorm potential solutions to how to add challenge to the game and so on and so forth until you've really created a really strong game, a really strong engineering solution. So sometimes what we find is when we are working through this iteration that we actually end up having to go backwards. So sometimes I try to brainstorm solutions, but it turns out that I can't come up with any because I haven't defined the pro problem properly. So I have to go back and redefine the problem. S sometimes I might have be trying to develop a prototype, but realize that I don't have enough solutions to pick a, a promising prototype from. Or sometimes I'm trying to test my prototype and I realize that I can't even test it. So I have to go back and, and work on it some more and get it testable. Or sometimes after I've tested it, when I go to analyze the data, I realize that I did the wrong test and I have to go back. And so on and so forth. You can just keep going backwards or forwards in this iteration. But one time through this loop is considered one iteration on my solution. So I want to be able to iterate and get better and better solutions and better and better software and better and better art projects by going through this process over and over again. That's the idea behind iterations and why they're so important for both art and coding and engineering solutions to problems.